After three grueling months of play, the WWBL regular season has concluded. After evening out the rosters, this was the tightest race for first place the league has ever seen, with very tight win percentages determining seedings. For more on the most competitive season yet, let's get right into this week in the WWBL. We start off this week with the Swarm. Now, the Swarm were the only team in the league to finish under 500 with a record of 14 and 15. Kevin Greer has shown flashes, but had an underwhelming season with a 422 average, 14 home runs, and 44 RBIs. And this was not what was expected of the preseason MVP favorite. Chris Van Russo hit 468 with 12 home runs and 32 RBIs and was a big reason behind the club's 14 wins as he kept his team in games with a 2.34 ERA and 23 strikeouts and 41 inning pitched. Run production was an issue at times for this team as Van Russo always kept it close. The Swarm will look for Shane Navas to step up as he hit 410 with 10 home runs and 29 RBIs which was a decent year. But in this league, hitting just over 400 isn't nearly enough production proving why this team sits in last place. Up next, the Canes. The Canes would end up taking the number three seed in the standings. Despite his numbers slipping a little, Mark Didio's unbelievable season made him the first ever to hit for the Triple Crown, a very well-deserved feat. Didio came out of nowhere and had a monster second half of the year. He hit 31 home runs with 57 RBIs and a 529 batting average. As expected, he also was a front runner for Cy Young with a 1.62 ERA and a league lead in 49 strikeouts. Wiffle ball takes more than one star, and the Canes saw multiple players step up. While he was overshadowed, Ryan Smith also had a great season with a 493 average, 19 home runs, and 46 RBIs, placing him in the top three for all batting categories. Smith also went off for a couple of weeks before coming back down to earth and finishing his 2017 campaign as one of the league's most feared hitters. With an incredible top of the order, Russell Krause has held the team back a little. He hit 8 home runs with 13 RBIs and a 321 average, one of the league's worst. Krause comes alive in the playoffs and will be looked upon to come up clutch in unexpected moments. This team will look to stay hot at the plate and ride Didio's arm to the championship, finishing with a 21-20 record. The Outlaws were able to sneak away with the two seed after an up and down season. Kevin Rabex hit 484 with 30 home runs and 48 RBIs. He led this team offensively and will most likely be the MVP runner up as he was a step below Didio. He is a streaky hitter, but he broke out of an early season slump and then showed his power and ability to get on by laying out infield singles. Rabex is also the number two pitcher who saw plenty of work this season and can step in if Ace Dylan Ward struggles. Ward had a 2.94 ERA, and although he doesn't have elite stuff, he has solid command and allows the Outlaws' stout defense to make plays. Ward had a solid year offensively. He had 18 home runs with 42 RBIs and a 427 average, and he started to get hot at the end of the season. Former postseason MVP Jake Thaw also feels confident despite his regular season struggles. He had 333 with 6 home runs and 16 RBIs. Ward will keep his team in games, and the offense will be tested against Mark Didio, and will need to score runs in order for this squad to roll along. All the Outlaws have, a, have won a championship before, so they hope to see their experience prove to be a difference maker. The Truth were able to grab the one seed after losing only one game on the final weekend of play. Luke Yokoi's at bat has come alive. He slugged 16 home runs and 30 RBIs, with many coming in recent weeks, and he also finished with a 455 batting average. Angel Moy is also in contention for Cy Young after posting a 1.87 ERA and 35 strikeouts. Moy has been a perennial power on the bump and hopes to see that success carry into the playoffs. Moy has struggled at times in recent years at the plate, but with 13 home runs and 24 RBIs and a 411 average, he can certainly get hot at the right time. Brian Ravex was hitting 507 going into the final week of play, and an awful week took him off the MVP ballot and left him with a 435 average as well as 9 home runs and 28 RBIs. There is no doubt the Truth are the favorite to win. All they need to do is live up to the hype. The playoffs are held in a double elimination format with 5 game series. The Truth face off against the Swarm and the Outlaws will meet up with the Canes. This year all the teams are serious contenders. Now it is time to wait and see who catches the playoff magic. 
We will review the postseason in our next video and get you ready for the WWBL Championship Series. Thanks for listening to this week in the WWBL. You were not into Hummin' up, hummin' up, hummin' up. This kid's raking. I think I still lead the league in homers, oh though, God. which is good. What's up, Brian? How are we? Gang gang. <laughs> Welcome to the gang gang. Go berserk.